The Clinical Significance of Skeletal Muscle Excitation and Related Events Introduction In the middle of the night, around 2 a.m., a young, age 20-something, cardiopulmonary technologist is called to the ICU to assist the attending physician with an endotracheal intubation. The process is needed for mechanical ventilation in the treatment of an 80-year-old man in respiratory failure. Admitted to the small local hospital with the diagnosis of pneumonia as a complication of a nonspecific gastrointestinal cancer Because the man was just admitted without a family member present There's not much prior medical history and a do not resuscitate order DNR is not in effect Requiring the clinical team to do all they can to treat the man's respiratory failure and save his life if necessary both the cardiopulmonary technologist and the physician are certified in endotracheal intubation. They hyperextend the patient's neck appropriately to pass a laryngoscope in order to view the glottis for inserting the tube. They're both experiencing difficulty in passing the endotracheal tube due to cervical arthritis and joint rigidity. Two laryngoscopies are performed by each. The physician orders the muscle relaxant succinylcholine to be administered. The patient is now unable to breathe spontaneously due to pharmacological blocking of his respiratory muscles known as neuromuscular blockade and the patient is totally dependent on the clinical team to ensure adequate ventilation and oxygen during the intubation procedure. On his third attempt, the cardiopulmonary technologist is able to intubate the patient but the physician reports that breath sounds are not heard. The team inspects the patient's airway with a laryngoscope and determines that the endotracheal tube is in the glottis between the vocal cords and the tip does not therefore appear to be in the esophagus. Breath sounds are still not heard and despite giving oxygen and mechanical ventilation, the patient's cardiac status deteriorates to ventricular tachycardia. The patient is giving cardiopulmonary resuscitation CPR, for over 30 minutes. Nevertheless, ventricular fibrillation ensues, followed by death. An autopsy performed the next morning found that the 80-year-old man had a rare, untreatable condition known as tracheoesophageal fistula. The tip at the distal end of the endotracheal tube had passed from the trachea through the fistula and into the esophagus, making it impossible to ventilate the patient despite the fact that the proximal portion it was situated properly in the glottis between the vocal cords.